This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows Granger's got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. You prepared your kids for their first steps the first day at school, their first dance, that big test, all the wins along the way. With a College Savings Iowa 529 plan, you'll prepare them for even more. Register before May 31st for a chance to win a $1,000 contribution. Visit collegesavingsiowa.com to make the first move toward a bright future. College Savings Iowa. It's how parents get through college. Administered by the State Treasurer of Iowa. Hashtag no music, no intro. And I feel like I feel like this day has been coming for a while for the off season. I wanted to get on here, so have an episode. So you're probably, most people are probably going to be listening to this Monday morning, Monday, Tuesday, long holiday weekend. Uh, our Patreons will be able to listen to this over the weekend. Um, but I think what is is disappointing about today is one this team never sees ceases to surprise me or just make me just annoyed. Um, so if you don't know what we're talking about, you know, I thought we were going to have record this episode, talk about some OTA things, Hunter Renfro, get into like football shit. I can't, I, I feel the fact that, we did something pretty fucking big for the podcast overall and for our listeners. Like I it, just, but it is what it is. Cause this is what, <coughs> this is what it is of being a saints fan. If you don't know what we're talking about, Jeff Duncan, of all people, of all people, bro, Jeff Duncan, the, the same Jeff Duncan that, that put on Twitter that he was smitten with the 15 year old Natalie Portman, bro. Like Jeff, Splitting, bro. <laughs> Puts a report out. This this may be the this may be the biggest new Jeff Duncan has broken for the Saints since Jamal Brown got traded to the Redskins because he was the first. <laughs> That's a oh, yeah, you know I keep I keep him talk, bro. I keep him talk. But I'm being serious, bro. Like, this may be the biggest news Saints-wise he has broken since then. Because. Probably so. I'll throw in the strife between Rita Benson and the family. Okay. But that's kind of like, that's kind of like internal. Right. Shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but had it not been for Jeff Duncan, um, potentially we no one may have known this and at the end of the day and this and this is gonna you know i'm gonna have to i'm gonna do a little preaching tonight ryan i'm gonna have a little I'm, I'm gonna have to but he reports this morning friday my day off trying to get ready for the four-day weekend we're gonna drive up go to monterey bay go to the aquarium be right Ooh. by the ocean oh i don't even know what this i don't even know what it is so hey <laughs> But just think, five hours north is where, like, the Bay Area, San Francisco, okay, oh, yeah. Monterey yeah. Bay is two hours going straight towards the coast. Um, It has one of the best, if not the best, aquariums in, in probably, you know, at least the USA located yeah. there. Yeah. So, um, right. quick aside, like, my daughter has really gotten to, like, jellyfish lately, and so, you know, for one of her birthday presents, we took her to, there's a aquarium in Long Beach, and she loved it. She got to, you know, do jellyfish. So now we're like, all right, we, you, we did that one here. We got to go, we got to do the big one. So that's that's what we're doing this weekend. So I'm, I'm all relaxed, drinking my coffee, and blah, blah, boom. Saints bring in former Bucks, 
head coach, former Raiders head coach, John Gruton, to get his opinions in notes and notepads and in clipboards of emails <laughs> of how potentially him being Derek Carr's coach for the tenure he was Derek Carr's coach can help them get the best out of Derek Carr. Yeah. I don't I don't know if I want to start with the 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 look of it or you know, let me start with the football component of it first. Let me start with the football component of it first. Yeah. How dense and dumb of an offensive fucking coaching staff do you have where you have to bring in someone who only coached Derek Carr a couple of seasons and pick his brain when Derek Carr has been in the league almost, what, nine years now? Like, what? what and, and if we want to be technical about it, why would you, why are you doing this now? Shouldn't this have been done before you decided to sign him? Like if if you go if you gonna be dirt That's what I that's what I was thinking. Like like shouldn't this like shouldn't this have been something that was done before? Like if you're gonna be dirty and, 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 and we're gonna talk about that and go down that route, like at least do the due diligence ahead of time, but to sign a, a, a quarterback who's gonna be the face of the franchise going forward and be like, hey, uh, can you can you come in and just kind of give us what you think about him and like make like what? Like what what has Pete Carmichael been doing for 15 plus years? I've been playing solid time. Come on, bro. Like what are we, like if this is not a a blatant example of a coaching staff telling on like that coaching staff is telling you what they are capable of. They're telling on themselves. It's it's uh I have so many thoughts, bro. I have so many thoughts. And on, on the football aspect, you know, I, I the only to to look at the brighter side. Well not the brighter side, but I guess to give them a little credit or try to give them credit. You know, I heard them talking about how well, I heard Derek Carr basically saying how, you know, they will run this play in Oakland, but with the Saints it's something it has a different name and stuff like that. So maybe they want to bring in Gruden to kind of iron those things out since he kind of, since he, you know, he knows his scheme and he has a pretty good familiarity with what the Saints did, you know, covering the Saints and, you know, raising Sean Payton and stuff like that. I guess, I guess. But it's like, damn, you got to bring in, you got to bring in John Gruden for that. For this? You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all can't sit. <laughs> and, and, and again, if, if, if we speak into the nitty gritty, of if you're gonna be downright dirty about it, at least like ha- try to maybe ha- like can you like try to like make make it a little better, like a phone call. Like you can you look you can you can bring John Gruden in person, but you can't bring Doug Peterson in to do it. Come on, that, come on, bro. You gotta zoom Doug Peterson, but you can't zoom. <laughs> you got br- brought that man in, in, in the in the back door. Oh, <laughs> and so then we need we we got to talk about obviously we have to talk about the the other the, the component of it and this and this is where I think today's like the, the tweet I put out this morning probably is the most like the most quote unquote blown up tweet I have. I have blocked probably approximately 40 plus people today. Hey. 40 plus, bro. That tweet has brought into my mentions the most myriad of bigots, racist, so, some obviously that just, some just in my mentions because it's, you know, they it gets on their timeline and they, they're, horrible terrible people and they want to be loud and but some of those people are 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 saints fans that 
other Saints fans and listeners of this podcast, you know, or, or follow on Twitter. A, a lot of, a, I, I, I gotta be real. A lot of, a lot, a lot of those people. Oh, who, oh, okay. Who who follows who follows this person that I also follow? Oh, huh. Okay, okay. So the more glaring thing of what makes this so egregious is that John Gruden was fired or resigned, sorry, because he had emails where he was racist, homophobic, transphobic, Mashazanistic. All the phobes. All, all of them, bro. All, all of them. All of them. <laughs> all the phobes. It's is bro. He he hit every single one of them. Right? And everyone was like, well, you know, well, and even back even back then when the allegations happened, was like, well, you know, if, you, if, if everyone's emails got released and like then, then she, cool, I get that. Then release all the emails. I don't give I don't give two shits. Release them all. And some of the pushback, well, let, let me let me stick with that point. So all, all the all the folks, right? I watched an episode last night. Who out for the who out for the straight guy? Watched the episode, and this last season is in New Orleans. This episode features Stephanie. I, I'm skipping on her last name. But she was like nominated or awarded like the Saint Superfan, I believe, in 2020. Um, 30 year ish, probably late 30 year ish woman, lives in New Orleans, um, a lesbian, has been in a relationship with her girlfriend for six years. And the heart of that episode was because of how she was treated by people in the South. And we get it. We're we're black men from the South. So we understand more than anyone how discouraging and foul and bigoted the South can be. Which is, but we both still have a love for the South. It's a, it's a weird, it's a weird relationship. It, it's very but weird. I digress. This, and because of the treatment that she got she started to essentially have what is called internalized homophobia. But I didn't even know what internalized homophobia was till last night. <laughs> Meaning that because of everyone else putting you down for who you are as a person, you internalize that and you start having this, safe, this either self-hatred about yourself or you feel like you can't be yourself around everyone else because how it makes them feel. I, I, I don't I don't want to make them uncomfortable, so let me not be me. So it going through the episode, she had to work through that work through that trauma. She won this award three years ago, and you telling me that the message that you're sending to the person that got awarded the super fan of the year three years ago is that she doesn't matter because the person you're consulting with does not see her as a person. Like John Bruton had had something very clear to say about um Mr. Smith of the of the NFL PA. Said that man had missed some tire lips, bro. As someone who has big lips. Like, do you know how offensive that is? Now, like, if you with your boys, right? When I when let me be clear with when you with your boys, you know, what one of your niggas say, you know, you in the club, you, you throwing jokes. We, we we can joke like that, right? Cause that's us. That's us. But you, if you white and you say something like that about another black person, that tells about what you feel about the race as a whole. That's how we take it. And so to have someone like that in the building who has clearly shown you who he is, transphobic, homophobic, racist, whatever. And at, and everyone and another thing, oh, well, you know, you know, the whole whole NFL is is 
it's, it's shady. Like, what, what can you, what, 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 what can you do? Speak up. Say, say something. Like the, 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 the complicity of, of it really annoys me, man. I, I, I don't. That, that's the most annoying thing about it. Like, I, I get it. I get, right. Like at the end of the day, are, are me and you, Adam and Ryan, are we going to be able, even with our thousand of listeners we get per episode, are we going to be able to change anything in the grand scheme of things? We're not. No. But at least, like, you, you and I have had this conversation about having a platform, like how everyone shouldn't have a platform. The fact that you and I have even a, a quasi- minute of a platform is weird. weird it was it's been it's weird now it was weird when me and nick started saints talk years ago it's weird but that said and it's like i i, I got into this conversation with you know uh i, I don't follow him you know he I, he has some funny tweets he he, he comes on my timeline gets retweeted on my timeline from time to time um at jordan h michael me and my guy kind of got into a back and forth about it and it's like He's like, well, the, the the large majority of the fan base doesn't care about this. Okay. And? Like, just because the large majority of Saints fans don't care that they brought John Gruden in, is like that normalizes that normalizes it. Th- doesn't make it okay. Not only that, we know for a fact that the Saints front office. Hello? I, I'm not. I'm not missing. I'm not going to mince my words tonight. The Saints front office listens to almost every episode we put out. Mm. So when I say shit on this podcast, I know they hear it. We probably know that we got a mole in our Discord. Hello. So. I know the words that I say. I know who I know who's being who the message is being received by. I want them to know that as long as you and I have a platform to say what we can say about the team, football wise on the field and otherwise, we're going to continue to use that platform and call them out on their shit when it deserves to be called out on. Mickey, Dennis. Whoever else has ears who listens to us, this is a very specific message to you. Me and Ryan know that me, that we as a, as we could get 10,000 listens per episode, get 10,000 followers on social media. We know for a goddamn well, we'll never get media credentials. Game is the game. Because we will ask questions and, I, and I'm not, and I, I want to make this very clear. I'm not putting down anyone who covers the Saints. I'm not putting down Ross. I'm not putting down, I'm not putting down um, John Hendricks. I'm not putting out, putting down um, Chris Rivalulu, KT, none of that. Not putting anyone down. But we also understand the game of the NFL and, and being, and working in the media, not in the NFL. And I want to be very precise and clear about this. Working the working as a media entity covering the Saints, because mm-hmm. something might happen if you if you ask the wrong question. If you credentialed, you might not be credentialed no more. The question might be completely valid. Oh, we know that. Que- we know question that. might be completely valid. A good journalistic question. Boom, you're not credentialed anymore. Shit, if you're not credentialed anymore, how you gonna work? How you gonna provide? Maybe you got a family. I get that, right? I'm not. I'm. I don't. I don't do this podcast to 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 be famous, to get credentials, to be to to get clout. I do this podcast because we have created a community of people who come together, who has come together for the Saints. But that's not the only reason we stay together. I didn't even realize today that we have someone who's transgender who is in our Discord and is a listener of our podcast. Is that that? At, didn't even know. That shouldn't matter, right? Because it shouldn't matter that they're transgender. Because at the end of the day, that's just a person. The, and that person, trans or not, express 
gratitude for me making that tweet and calling the Saints out on their shit. We we got we got to stop with this. Oh, well, you know, corrupt organizations. It is what it is. Like no, like yes, I I get that. I get that. I mean that mentality. It, it, nothing will change if you carry that mentality. It's, it, so I, I used the analogy in our Discord this morning about that's like well you know everyone in law you know not everyone in law enforcement is bad but like. A large majority of them are, but uh, what can you do? That's that's just the system. That that the, the blue wall. I mean, you know, there's Jim Crow in the system. Come on now. I mean, I mean, what you gonna do? Man? It's got Jim Crow. You know, I mean, it just is what it is, man. It's the South. Where we got Jim Crow, ain't nothing we can do about it. It's like maybe not. And I'm not trying to you know make it seem like what we can right. Do one one millionth of the level of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, just that mentality of. Like, oh, you know, like, yeah, it just is what it is, man. It's just supposed to. It's like, I think we heard that during the whole, pay, you know, through, during the kneeling thing with Kaepernick. It's like, oh, stick to football and stuff. It's like, no. It's like, no, this shit intersects with a lot of shit that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. And it is what it is. And look, we as sports fans, we have to, like, we all learn how to comp- compartmentalize yes. certain yes. things. Like, you know, the, the greatest Saints team of all time, the 2009 Saints, has a serial rapist on that team. You know what I'm saying? And he was, like, the, one of the most prolific players. I, on that I team. like how you know like, I like how someone tried to, like, throw that at me as a retort today. And it was like, motherfucker, none of us knew this was happening when he was on the team. Like, what are you, like, <laughs> like just, I, I've got some ridiculous, like, attempted clapbacks today. It was, it's it's been it's a, a journey, but I, I'm sorry. I'm ridiculous. sorry. It's just, it's just ridiculous, man. It's like, look, this, and this is what I, I tweeted out later. I was like, look, if y'all don't care, fine. Like, if you don't care about it, okay. Like, just move on, scroll past it, and keep on. I do it every day. But it's so interesting to me that I, that that tweet, my tweet, ruffles their feathers so much. Like, ruffles, bro. Yeah, 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 bro. You had Raiders fans coming. I don't know how they just find you tweet. Block, Raiders fans come in. Oh, block, kind of block, 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 block. 40, 40 plus, bro. Like, I, pro, I, 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 if I, I wish there was a function on Twitter that t- could tell you how many people I block. Like, I, there's like a daily counter, bro. It's in the 40s. That's how much it was. Um, and I, and I, I'll, I'll do if, if it, I, I wouldn't care if it was in the hundreds. Like, my message is not going to change. I, Bro, go read my quote to you. Someone tried to get in my mentions before we started recording at LA underscore resale. He took a tweet that I tweeted January 22nd, 2021. Now, I don't know if he purposely tried to change like the date format to make it look like I tweeted it January 2022, but it was a tweet where I was wanting the Saints to bring in Deshaun Watson and trade for him when shit was going bad in the um, during the Texans. And his tweet, he, he he took a screenshot of my tweet from January 2021, and he said, "But you wanted Deshaun Watson with the like the investigating little emoji." He tried to diss you. You what? You? what? You, you, like, are you? So one, you went, you you went through. My tweet searching for you were searching for something to try to make me seem like a um a person who like oh wait well you're being high and mighty about that but like what about this no man what where whether it's fucking Tyree Kill whether it's Frank Clark whether it's uh Micah Parsons my message has been the fucking same I. The whole like oh, you know football wins like eh, you know I just watched the game and like football that's cool and I'm not and if that's you then be that person right be be that but don't come at me or anyone else that has an issue with it because it right. yes it's football it's a game blah 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 but the way it intermingles 
ultimately with life has, as I've gotten older, is not lost on me. Right. No question. Because we're sitting there. You sit there with, you know, at a Saints draft party with a woman, with a trans person, with a homosexual person, with a black person, with a Hispanic person. With, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's our whole crew. When we show up... we. Bro, we show up diverse as fuck, bruh. You know, fucking people from England, you know, Amsterdam, wherever. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like... But we have we have someone coming from Scott. Man, I, I, man I, I, I was like, you know what? Even before all this shit happened, I was so happy to go on this podcast and talk about the fucking Apple Watch Bandit shit in the Discord. Bro, I was just, just so just bro. elated about it, bruh. Like, we have someone from Scotland who has never been to the U.S. before. Never been to the U.S. before. Mm. This man was was an alleged murderer, but was acquitted. Johnny Crockett would have been would would if the Apple Watch doesn't fit, you must you, you must acquit. Anyway, this man said this podcast, this community, this group of people. This is the first time and experience I. If I want to go to America for the first time, I want it to be for that. Do you know, just as a person, how powerful that is? Like, God, like, I like at least we're doing something right. Like, I, I don't care, like, if our listeners don't get to the huge, huge numbers that podcasts that are widely successful are. But at least that lets me know we're doing something right. So if we have such a diverse group of people who support us, are willing to pay us hard earned money every month, then it is on us when shit is going on and the team is doing shit that affects a targeted community women last year. We, we did so many Deshaun Watson episodes. So, so, so much last year, bruh, in case at LA underscore resale is listening Keep going through my tweets, though. Please keep going through them. That it's women, gay, tr- whatever. I really want to to get over the the whole like. It feels like it's just boys will be boys. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That that's that's how it sounds. Oh, you know what can you do? Boys will be boys. Right. Ask him to be better. Like that. That. That's. That's my thing. Uh, like, if if we if we want to be. Oh, uh, and I, I know I messed up. I messed up my tweet. I I, I could have sworn we were already in June and it was already Pride Month. Yuck! 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 Fine! 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 Whatever. The tweet. The tweet. The tweet still stands. Like part of me. If if I had enough time today, Ryan, if it was my day off. Part of me, I was I was going to see like who, who can I get from the, you know the the LGBT. Like, like who represents like that community and an organization? Who can I get like like a like a CEO, like a director, someone? Maybe we can get them on a, on on the pod and have them mm. talk about you know how what 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 that feels like to them as a community. If you have the same any NFL team, do like how does that feel? thing is here's the thing like i heard a bunch of people say the saints don't care like they don't care like they don't see what you're talking about they're not worried about what john grew saying this that. they don't mm. care it took jeff duncan putting that little story out in something jeff duncan blocked by half of half of saints twitter <laughs> most people ain't even know what we're talking about because he's blocked by half of saints twitter. it took him putting it up if if nothing had happened with John Gruden, if John Gruden was just John Gruden without those, you know, without those emails and stuff, then they would have had a picture of him at the, on the field and stuff like that. You know, oh, the Saints brought John Gruden. You know what I'm saying? It would have been a whole thing, like a media thing. But no, they kept it on the tuck. John, you know, John Gruden put it out. No statement, no nothing. Not John Gruden, Jeff Duncan. And that's it. So, like, they know, like, like Jeff, Greg Benzo ain't no idiot. You know what I'm saying? Like, he knows the PR game. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so, 
they knew the issues that come with that. But they just chose to ignore it. And I'm like, I just kept asking myself, like, why Saints? Like, why do the Saints have to be the first? Like, it's not like he he just he didn't go to visit the Redskins or the Bucks. And, and, and he probably he, he's probably whatever. gonna visit other teams, bro. Like, I'm I'm not I'm not dumb. Not even not even the Broncos. Like, like, like Sean Payton. That's his. He's Sean Payton mentor. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's his dude. He ain't gonna visit the Broncos. They gotta be the Saints, Saints bro. It gotta be us, right? You know what I'm saying? I mean, to, first. to pick his brain on Derek Carr, who he wanted to trade every season, Ryan. Every season. Yeah. Oh, let, let me let me. That that would be like me. Pocket passer. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just saying a pocket passer. You act like this is you know Lamar Jackson or like you know Justin Justin Fields or something like Ooh, we got to crack the code on this guy to see what we can. Look at Derek Carr. Like let's just look at the tape. Like, <laughs> Like, could you? Like, I would have. Like, this is a. This reminds me. Like, you drafted like, him. Like, come on, bro. Him. Like, <laughs> did, you, did you not watch him at Fresno State, nigga? Was you sleeping? <laughs> That's like someone who, like, went through a terrible divorce, right? And the new husband ask 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 you ask you out to go have drinks and be like hey bro like um just want to pick your brain like how, like what like what ha- like how 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 do you get the best out of out of LaShawn? nigga i don't know we're not together anymore like what are you what what <laughs> it they uh, they are such a such an annoying team and you said it perfectly about the whole not caring thing if they didn't care at all, why do they continue to listen to our podcast? If they don't care, why is there probably more than likely someone who works for the team in some capacity in our Discord? Teams that don't care don't don't do that. Not you know not for a. I won't call it a, a lowly podcast, but you know we we, we are who we are, right? We we know we we yeah, it was small time. care, but like you are a billion dollar company, and you care. It's a weird juxtaposition because at one on one hand, you you show that you you don't care about certain parts of your fan base all the time, women whatever but like on the other on the other hand it's like but we need to know what they're saying about us though we need to know right make, make up your mind like for me like if you're gonna do what you're gonna do just do it but, but don't worry about but, but don't worry about people saying when you do it though like you can't you can't have you can't have the best of both worlds man like that's 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 the thing that's a, that's funny to me exactly like and you, you, you remember what you remember what you asked me about like what what I needed to see from like DA the season, yeah. My, my and I gave my answer, bro. Like what I was told this week about that whole article situation, bro. He is who he is, bro. He is he is not comfortable of being challenged, right? Like, like I don't even I don't even care what your position. Like I don't. If you're a person sometimes, like just as a human, if you can't accept being challenged, like not I'm not I'm not I'm not even saying that 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 challenge is derogatory. It could be a healthy challenge. It could be a especially if you're running a running an organization. Right. It could be a it could be constructive. But if if just the mere thought of it like incenses you. That's a, that's a, that tells me everything I need to know about you as a person. And now that person is running the Saints. So yes, Dennis Allen, you, you are on the hot seat. I, 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 I'm sorry to break it to you, bro. Like, I, I don't know what to tell you. Because <laughs> if you finish set... Is it all? Is it all? Because I don't hmm. know. Like, you know, Mickey Lewis. Like, that's true. That's true. I, I, bro, you, they 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 would have they would have to like what win like what five or six games maybe maybe right right for for that that seat to actually be turned up 
Um, I do want to do a pivot and talk about some football, some football things. Um, anything else on on this whole John Gruden coming in, being being in the bill? Anything else that you want to you you want to add before we before we pivot? Nah, man. Like other than that, like if it was just a foot from a just a, fo- a football standpoint, like I have no problem with the team. Like just turning every leaf they can to maximize what they got. You know what I'm saying? I have no problem with that. But at the end of the day, it's like have an idea what's going on and like have some kind of some kind of backbone, man. Yes. Why? Like why? Why? Just like tell me why. Like what's what's the real benefit of doing that? And honestly, you know, after seeing the reaction on Twitter, I guess it's not a nope. big deal. It's really nope. not. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a big deal. I looked at Florio's article. He didn't mention nothing. Like, so it's like, oh, well, I guess, you know, like, no one cares about that. And that's fine. Like, if that's the case, it's like, okay, you know, like, okay. Like, you will just, just write that off, you know. I'll, but I, I don't like, one thing that gets on my nerves is people, you know, come at me or you like, oh, you being fake woke. You know, like, you, you're just, you 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 reacting to get well, I don't know views or whatever like you reacting are you being disingenuous about your reaction? That's all like because bro like ain't nothing nothing disingenuous about me at all. Nothing disingenuous about nope. you. Nothing disingenuous about this podcast. Like we gonna do what we want to do. We are gonna talk about what we want to talk about. Period. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how it is. We're not doing this for you know nope. likes, fans, for nobody. We just doing our thing because we enjoy doing this. And, you know, that kind of annoys me. But, you know, I'm not tripping, man. We just going to keep it moving. What one? And like I said, like, but like I said, like, if it's not your thing, like, if you don't care, that's fine. Like, that is completely, I completely understand. If you just want to look at football and tune out the rest of what's going on in this crazy world and just enjoy football in that way. Like, I completely understand it. You know, but don't be jumping in my mentions. You know me because I look at you know I, I I like to look at all the complexities that come with it. I want to look at everything. Don't get on me for that shit because that's what I want. Right. Um. One one other thing I I, I did want to add is even though I know it's a, it's a tricky it's a tricky tight rope to to navigate. Obviously for um for the media. I I I do want to say, can we can we do a little better? A little bit. And th- th- again, this is not a critique. This is this is not, um, you know, anything that is that is nef- nefarious. And I, when and when I say, can we do a little better? I, I said, like, can we? Whatever the next o- DA presser is, that's open to the media. Can someone ask a question? Maybe. And if he gives you like a cookie cutter answer, can can there be like a follow up? A follow up. That's it, bro. Like that's it. Like my question. I said, um, Dennis, uh, with all the reasons that uh, former head coach John Gruden got resigned for the the emails and potentially what he said about people who are transgender, people who are African American people who are, are are gay or homosexual. Um, did that factor into your your guys' decision making at all as an organization uh, before you guys brought them in? Period. Bro, it. That, that is. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you this much. Just that question will annoy and the shit. I know. Out of oh, because, I'm well aware. Because they it would annoy them. Like Greg Benzel would be like. Ah, no more questions. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's, <laughs> it's like they don't want to have to answer those type of questions, bro, because they don't have the cookie cutter answer to answer that. They're gonna be like, "Oh, you know, well, John Gruden's coached a long time in his league, and uh, 
blah 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 blah. They don't want to answer those types. Yeah, of yeah, I, 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 especially if you come with a yeah, yeah, I, no, I, I hear you. Yes, yeah, John. I, but I, but no, I, no, but I, this, I, no. This is me I, pretending to be the report. Like, yeah, yeah, no, I hear you. John, John had extensive, extensive history in the league. Won, won a Super Bowl, but I, 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 I still did. did the reason of his emails and the the communities that he offended with those emails did that factor into your guys' decision before uh, bringing him in? Yes or no? Yes or no? no? Come on, come on, like, bro! I, I I didn't go to Northwestern. I didn't go to journalism school. But you know what? You know what you have to do in my job as a social worker is you gotta know how to interview people. I gotta know how to interview adults. I gotta know how to interview and build rapport with kids who have experienced the absolute worst trauma in their life, usually perpetrated by the people who, who is supposed to be their providers. So if we want to talk about interviewing, I got you covered. <laughs> I got you covered. All, all I'm saying, cause you can not only that, I have to know, I got to know how to interview and how to talk to people, how to talk to a person where I'm on their level. When I'm talking to like a certain, a certain person of a certain, maybe social economical class, I got to maybe talk. Sometimes I got to just shoot the shit with my, with my clients, bro. Like just yeah. person to person. Yeah. Okay. Don't want to bring no college words. And this, I'm not trying to be offensive, but you, no, we, we talk, we talking. We we talking. It's about your kids. We talking. Let's talk about it. So I know how to talk. I know how to talk like that. I know how to talk when I'm talking to a C- CEO of a company. Switch it like that. The 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 questions and how to create those questions are is not a difficult thing. I'm just I'm just asking, and I know that they probably can't ask it to that specific degree of how I would ask it. But can something a little close of like, can that be addressed? That's because that, that, I know me and you will never get, we, we not, we not getting, we not getting to the table, bro. Only thing, only way that happened is if we go to the senior bowl one year and, and, and Mickey decides to roll out of bed and, 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 and that's it, bro. Only way that would happen. And even if that happened, like he, he probably, he probably see us and, and turn around and walk away, bro. Like, the thing about you know the media is you know they're sig- they are signals to the Saints and the Saints PR t- staff. So when they do ask questions like that, it's it sends signals and it has reverberations throughout the organization. Uh, so you know there's nothing wrong with doing that stuff. So for any you know Saints media that does listen to this podcast, this is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows granger has got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. I don't know if they do, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wrong with taking a little chance, right? I get it. I get it. This is your job. You feed your family off of it. So I get it. It's scary to take a chance like that. I, we've had beat media on this podcast. They're talking about Sean Payton calling them six in the morning and it's about little stuff, not even big, like major questions, but little stuff in articles and stuff like that. So I understand it could be scary and stuff like that, man. But, you know, if you really care about certain things, man, like you just got to, got to, Nut up and go for it. Yeah, like I'm, I'm not saying ask something out here that's that's just so, like you, 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 yeah. Diana Walters, and you just putting your job back. Like you just say, like I'm not saying go, go hard at them niggas like that, right? But like I, I, I do think that something has, something has to be asked. Right. Um. Anyhow, I've talked about it enough. Um. Uh, I, I I should put out in this podcast that the only teams that uh, Frank Clark are talking to are the Saints and the Chiefs. Uh, just two, bro. Just just two. So, of course, uh, go to the Chiefs. Chiefs, make it happen. Please, please. Um, I've I've forgotten a lot of shit that 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 happened at at, at OTAs because of today, bro. 
Oh, oh, so let okay. So we transition to football. Um the attendance, about 90% attendance overall. Yeah. Um yeah. Big, huge improvement from last year. Remember, our, our mentions were a little hot last year. Oh, are you guys talking about attendance? It's voluntary OTA. It's like, it's not a not. But it does, though. <laughs> it's, just, it's just the tone of the season. So, was was good to see the the attendance um, much better. Um, and Dennis Allen said during his pressure that the players who aren't there, he he's spoken to. So, I think only 10 Players are missing. I don't, I'm not going to go to lists or anything like that. No, Mike Thomas is missing. Alvin, um, yeah. So there, there's there's a couple. Um, the O line. I, I get it. OTA is super. It's early. We're almost in June, and I know it's early, but man, man, June will be here next week, and football starts like in like three and a half months, bro. Like it is not that far away. <laughs> and the only starter on the O-line during OTAs, bro, was Eric McCoy. I know uh, D- DA said, you know, he, he expect both pinning and, and Reese back for, for, for training camp. And, and hopefully that's the case. But if, if you, if we just want to talk about football only, the, the thing that can keep the saints from being a mark and Derek, I guess a, a good thing, as weird as it, a good thing is like Derek Carr has been used to playing with like bad offensive line, so he's not. <laughs> so, but, uh, but, but, um, that that's my that's probably my besides the defense hat like re- regressing greatly. And we've hit we've hit on that. Like the offensive line and his health is for sure my biggest concern. My my my. Second, second or first biggest concern of of the entire season. No question, no question. Just seeing that list of the second, and first, and second string, I was like, Oof. rough. Jeez, you know, you don't want to go. You don't want to go into the season like that. Um, from what I hear, you know, season Ruiz, he was like at least working out, like he was moving around, doing some old line stuff. So it looks like he is like on his way back, pinning for the other end. He kind of just hanging back, kind of like, you know, just kind of in the like cut, standing around him in the cut, you know. So he probably has a longer way to go. Probably won't see him until like a week or two in the training camp, maybe. That's just my estimation. Um, so, like, it's going to be a working process and wait and see, man. Like, we won't know, we won't know the starting five until week one. And even then, it's probably going to be a process after that, man. Like, it's. So that that that's the that's the sucky part, man. There's really nothing they can do about it. Like they they brought in a lot of guys. Um, there's a lot of you know drafted depth or undrafted depth. There's a lot of guys there, man. But you know it's just it might have to work out. But that's that's it is, man. Right there, man. Because and it's not even so much just pass blocking for Derek Carr. Man. Run, run, yeah, blocking, run stuff. What's the run scheme of this team? Because you got these three holes. You got El Camaro. You got Jamal Williams, and you got Kendrick Miller. It's like, bro, like, get that old line humming, baby. Get that old line humming, and then you got something. You got something you can work with. Um, so that that is of extreme importance. We won't know anything about this offensive line until week one. You know, we'll see a little see something in the preseason, and even then, you know, it's gonna be question marks. So it's just going to be a kind of a question hanging over this team until it is. we get the real football It is. Teams. Um, I want, I want, I want to throw a hot take at you. Okay, I can't, I can't go deeper than than what I'll say, but what I will say is, my hot take is that by the end of training camp, Jake Hayner might be quarterback too. Uh, come, coming in, it coming be. in a little spicy, bro. I mean, it's spicy, but it's not. It's not no, really spicy, no. Bro. Like it's, it's, it's jerk chicken. Oh, okay. You know <laughs> got some, got some kick. Like, oh, okay, Like, I heard you hear that because I mean, look, Jameis won. Like, Jameis wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me if a team was interested in 
bringing in Jameis. Um, also, it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, the Saints just moved on. Like, his contract is not, you know, it's not like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, like they felt the need to move on if he wanted to just move on. And just like, look, can y'all let me go? Like, I don't think the Saints are tied to the team or whatever. Like, if, if there and, was a, a team out there, and, I, okay, I'm not putting this out, but, you know, but, loses the, you know you know how it is training camp preseason you know so so oh, it ha- right. happen, happens at it's like dominoes, yeah. bro. you know so let's say there's a, a team that loses their quarterback for like a pretty bad injury but not like super super bad but at least one that's going to keep him out four or five weeks and i get it right to, for uh, any quarterback to go in to a system that they don't know pick it up blah blah, blah. but it, it it happens right you know you, you could I, i'm not saying it would be a lot you could maybe get like a a, a sixth, fifth. Colt McCoy, Colt McCoy is starting for the Cardinals. Colt McCoy, <laughs> like, I respect Colt McCoy, like, but bro, come on now. Cardinals are her big tanking out here. I see y'all. Tanking, <laughs> Release new Hopkins at a twenty-one million dollar dead cap space. It, and I and I know we talk about the Saints bad. We gonna we gonna continue to talk about them bad when they do bad shit, bruh. But if you want to talk about some like dysfunction and like some shit in Arizona, bruh, like that's that's the that's the pressure. The fact that's that pressure. you had at one point multiple teams offering you, it wasn't a it probably wasn't no first or second round pick, but at the time you probably at least could have got a third or a fourth for Nuke to like. To just cut him a couple, like what, a month after the draft for maybe like six weeks you were getting off, or maybe like five or six weeks you were getting offers. That is that, that's terrible, bro. <laughs> like, I think you probably could have gotten a third from Buffalo. Like, I know, I know they could have. That's 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 that's. Like we we have seen some bad team building in you know in organizations say swaps that's bad, bro. Like that is yuck. And I think you you put a a a, a message in the Discord about kind of like that being careful of always like just strip it down, just strip it down. Because so, like sometimes, bro, sometimes you sh- so my radar, bro. Sometimes you strip shit down, bro, and you like, oh, fuck, I, don't, I, don't know that. I don't know how to put this bitch back together. <laughs> Exactly. Like, you better have faith. You can't put it back together because that's what the Cardinals did. I mean, a couple of years ago, they picked number one overall. You know, they took, um, they, they, they brought in uh, Kid Queensberry, Jeffrey Colin Murray, new beginning. Let's go, baby. Look at that team. What? You know, after having Colin Murray on a cheap deal for years, look at that team. And, and this is, this is the, the thing about, the NFL, that's crazy. Sports in general, but the NFL for sure. I can't think of two, and I'm sure there's there's some out there, but the two teams I think the most about, like, just the definition picture of, like, shit changes and life comes at you fast, the NFL version, is I think about the Texans being up against, the, being up on the Chiefs, that playoff game. Oh. Like twenty, what I don't remember what the score was, right? I think it was like twenty four to zero. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, some crazy. And fifteen puts the Chiefs on his back. They come back. They win that game. Sean Watson was per- apparently a fucking sexual predator this whole whole time. No one knew. Um, and so they, you know, now you know they got CJ Stroud. They they're trying to build that team back up. Got Will Anderson. Um, D'Amico Ryan's, but like shit happens quickly. Gone through multiple head coaches in that time span. Use two black head coaches as like just I don't know pop can't can't just, fight him. just just can't fight him. Um, and that and the and the the uh, the second team, bro, is, is that car that that Cardinals Rams playoff game, bro, where mm. Kyler looked like. Big yuck in the lights, like who? Like yuck, yuck. I, it ain't been the not same. been the same since Ryan. Ain't been the same since. Um. So, 
like, like shit can change and often does change um extremely fast nfl wise uh what else do i potentially want to hit on uh i've i've said my i've said my piece about the foster moreau situation i, I want to say two two more things one he he just looks the part of a tight end bro like I don't know who I don't know if someone tweeted it or put in our Discord, but he is essentially everything they wanted Adam Troutman, Fat and Nemo to be, bro. Straight up. That's exactly what he was projected to be. Yep. That's exactly what he yep. would have been. And it was it was it was, it was such an on the head. I was like, God, you that per- perfect. Um or maybe I didn't have two things about Foster Moore. I was maybe it was just the one. And then uh, Hold on. There's there's one more. Oh, this is just an aside. Twenty two looks really gross on Shahid. I'm sorry, it's gross. I oh, can't stand man. it. Don't don't give me all the numbers, bro. Twenty two on Shahid. Um, I ain't gonna say the one looks bad. Uh, the the one look kind of fire on the latte, bro. I can't can't for a bro. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm like, damn, he look he looking he look he look, 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 look lean and long pause, bro. <laughs> pause, pause. <laughs> But he, he looked like man. I saw one rep of Alante. I was like, "Damn, he flew it, bro!" Flew it. Damn. So I hope he, you know, I hope he come with that mission. He went in number one, bro. Like it's, you know, you gotta bring it. Bro. You, know can't, you can't have that. Can't can't be coming in that pe- that bitch like Marquez Callaway, bro. <laughs> Callaway, bro. <laughs> have it. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I, I don't know who's wearing zero, bro. Like, don't dark saint. Like, don't stop it. Don't, don't come stop it. Me, I, 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 it's I, terrible, bro. It's not a number. Bro. It's, it's not even a ter- number. It's not even a number. It's not a. It me. It's a meaningless number. It's zero. It's nothing. Like, don't give me zero jerseys. Bro. We don't need like that. Should be reserved for like water boys or something. Like, I don't know. It's like a non-football player should wear zero. I don't want to see no my player. I don't, wear bro. Zero, bro. I don't. Ever. No. Ever. Get that shit out of here. Oh, I, can I do a quick apology? I, I, in in the haste today, someone quote tweeted something about my, my, the the tweet that's been fucking blowing up my phone. Um, and the person was agreeing with me and was just being very kind and agreeing how like how vile it was to bring Gruden in, bro. And I was going to block someone else. And accidentally blocked blocked that person, bro. And I was was trying. I was trying to go through like my block. I, I I remember like the username a little bit, but not like the full. And I and I was like, dang, he got god dang. I accidentally got him in the crosshair. It's like, and I was like, R. P. Pat Tillman. Like shit. Like damn it. <laughs> um, just add me, add me, whoever you please, are. please add add Ryan. I don't even know if you listen to the podcast. I don't know if you just came across came across the tweet accidentally and but if you listen to the pod and I act like I am I am reaching out like and the weird thing is especially because it's 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 Elon Musk's fucking Twitter and is like you would That's think right. I, you would go I could go to the tweet and I could click on the quote tweets and I could find that per nah bruh didn't work just didn't work so um yeah it only shows like six quote tweets and it show and there's like 28 of them. So if, so please, if, if, if you listen to the show, to the show, please at Ryan, your, your username, I think it was like a J dub, but I, I, I felt so bad, bro. I, I spent at least 30 minutes going through my block. It's, also, if you block someone, can, can someone on Twitter, like, can the, like the list should be uh, like chronological. Like I, I, the list should go in that order. You would think. Man. No, it it does not. It does not. This nigga want this nigga want to export yeah. Excel. Please, please. <laughs> please, Microsoft access it, figure it out. What? Um, <laughs> trying to think anything else from going going back to OTAs. Um, kind of switching. Oh, I wanted to say it's, it's nice to see Tyrone. It Mitchell is. It is at OTAs, and he just looks like just looking at his vibes. He just looks like he's in a better place right now. Which is great. I think yeah. that'll... What the, yeah, whatever that means football-wise, we'll see. But, like, it just looks like he's just in a good place, just comfortable, you know, working with the team, 
the secondary, bro. If they stay healthy, ooh, that's the secondary, it is, bro. bro. Like it's it should really be the strength of that defense, bro. It should be like 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 just one of them secondaries is just nasty. I, I I still want to and and maybe I maybe I can get a better idea about this during preseason or maybe early in the season. I, I still got to know what Marcus May is. I, I don't know what he is, bro. Me too. I agree. I completely agree. Is he, is he a agree. strong safety? He's gonna play in the box a lot. Is like it, it I, I don't is he gonna cover tight end? Like like at least like with Bon Bell, Bon Bell's role in the team, he played closer to the line of scrimmage. He in that 2018 season, he eliminated any tight end he was had in coverage. Anyone, bro. That was Bond's role, right? Marcus Williams knew what his role was. His role was to play center field, cover one, take the big take away the, the explosive play over the top, knew what his role. I, I don't know what Marcus May's role is on this team. I don't know what it is. I need to, I need to know that. Um, trying to think. Anything else, OT? I know it was, I know it was one play, and, and, Bob, and I get it, but, like, you know, seeing, seeing, seeing A.T. Perry kind of getting, you know, going up, back short fade with Jack, Jack, Jack Hanger. Just say it. But we didn't even talk. We... So much has happened. We didn't even talk about the the Jack Hayner little viral because him oh, photo man. shoot, bro. Like, <laughs> these niggas done took the 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 whole week leading up to like, oh, we go, we can we can talk about this in the pod. We can talk about that on the pod. Think about all this. this. T- the nigga took took it away, bro. One day, one day. Moon made man, national news, man. He made national news. <laughs> I wonder what he thinks about. It. I wonder if he think you know like just. Kind of chuckles, chuckles the head of it. if he hurt, man, because he, he was getting lit up. No, I, it's fun, and I I know nothing. It's funny because I know nothing about him, but because my girl's family lives lives in that area or, or familiar with that area where he was born. I mean, he 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 he's from Danville, California, bro. Danville, California is. Very, you know, suburban, affluent, white, just, yeah. just you, you know, you know what I mean. It's some, some of, yeah. bro. It's been funny looking at them, them pics during like the crawfish bowl and looking at Jack Hayner. This man, man, man. It's looking like it's looking like, <laughs> man, it's been funny as shit. I've been funny as shit to, to look at, man. Um. <laughs> I I feel like probably putting this at the end of the podcast is probably not the not the best decision, but we're, we're wrapping this up. I gotta go finish packing and everything. But um I I want to announce and Ryan and I want to announce that and what we were not expecting this and wasn't really planning it, but when we started building momentum um last year and and things we're like you know we talked about it was like man we should put our we should put our name down for for season tickets um you know just from the standpoint obviously i live in california ryan ryan lives in in alabama so what it wouldn't be for us to go to games every every sunday go to home games every sunday the the idea really was to use this podcast and now our our business and every week there's a home game us doing something where we ro- essentially raffle off a person to go to a saints home game all, all season um now i think a lot of reason why you know a lot of people have been getting those emails about, you know they are the they didn't do that right last season, bro. And you know, the, the 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 bloom is off the rose a little bit. But you know, we got we got that email last week, and we are, we are happy to announce that um, the hashtag Saints Tour podcast this upcoming season will have um, a a single ticket to raffle off um, for every Saints home game. I know you say, oh, every, every, every it's just just one. I can't take my dog, my kid. I can't take not 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 right now, not not, not right, right now. now. Maybe, Maybe in the future. future, not right now. And I and I get it, but and but 
Shit, you like me, you don't care. I, just, I go to a game. Shit, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. I, like, I talked about it with my girl. She was like, I just, it's, just, it's just one, though? It's just one. Yes, it's just one. It's just one. Like, if you want to go see a game. Now, the, the, the home games this season – Maybe not, maybe not the best, right? Like it's just, it, just in terms of the Saints' schedule, right? I mean, there's some good ones. There's Jacksonville, there's the Lions, but the, just think that next next season potentially you get to get that Sean Payton revenge game. I'm, I'm just, just saying. So I I don't know what the requirements are going to be in terms of how we do the raffle. Um, I'm ha- I have some ideas in my mind that um we will be beneficial to to the podcast because at the end of the day we, we're, we're about building this up and, and building our growth um so we want more engagement we want more people listening to our podcast so it ha- so however we do the raffle has to go hand in hand with that so we have to figure out what that is but we are happy and proud to announce that every home game this season we will be raffling off um to including the preseason games raffling off tickets um, and and maybe 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 there's a podcast, whether it be Saints related, whether it be any sports team related, that's able to do this. Maybe there is, bro, and maybe someone can tell me that there is. But and, and, until someone tells me otherwise, I'm saying that we pro- we are the only sports podcast that does this for our listeners and our fans. We might not be, but I, I, if we're not the only one, I, I know there's not many of us any mini podcasts that do it like we do to give back to the people that support and listen to us. So, um, it's, it's just a way to just say, you know, thank, thank y'all. Like, thank you for supporting us. Thank you for being there for us. We started this a little over, you know, three years ago. Um, we have so many events this upcoming, upcoming season. We have the, the brunch in Malibu at the end of July. Um, we have the big meetup in November. Uh, we're going to do, we're going to have a little, I don't, I don't know how big it is when we go to the, the Texans Saints game. Um, the big West coast meetup 31. We're going to be 31 deep in so far, bro. Four days before Christmas. 31 deep, bro. Come on, man. Come on. So, this is just for us to give back and say, you know, thank y'all for the support. Thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for being Patreon. Thank y'all for retweeting. Thank y'all for, you know, we, we know we're not conventional. We, we know we, we, we don't do the regular, uh, whatever the mode is of doing a podcast and probably what most people are used to. We don't, we, we don't, we, we just be us. That's it. I'm Adam and, and he's Ryan and we, we be who we are. Um, and that, that, and, that's what that's what you get from us and so um I, i'm excited about it it's gonna it's gonna be fun it's gonna be exciting um but anyhow uh we're going on for an hour if you if you've listened to this over the weekend because your patreon perfect cool hope you have a great holiday uh holiday weekend memorial day weekend if you listen to this next week um you know ho- hope you enjoy it hope you got your states Stay safe, stay safe, be safe out there. Uh, we'll be back next week. Hopefully not discussing another Saints kerfuffle, but who who knows at this point. But, you know, regardless of what the Saints do or don't do, whether it's good, bad, at, th- at, at this point, you know, when the whole Deshaun Watson thing happened, I, 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 if, if they had traded for him, I, I would have I walked away from my fandom. Not, not from not from potentially us doing a pot. Like we could have did a podcast and kept shit going, but I, I wouldn't watch any Saints games anymore. And I, and I would have been fine with that decision. Um, but now I kind of feel it's, it's my part of my responsibility that we, it, it, we got to cover these guys. Like, like only you and I can cover these guys. Straight up. Straight up. We, we, Cause and, I, and and again, it's not a shot towards the media that does cover them, but like, it, ain't ain't no one else can cover them like you and I can cover them. So, Straight up. Uh, so you, you we we are we are we're not going anywhere. We we will continue to cover the team like like we 
have been like we know how to do we'll we'll praise them when they do things right and we'll call them on their shit and their bs and their wrongdoings when 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 they deserve it bro like that that's fair right um just like being that's like being in a relationship with with a partner like you know praise me when i'm doing well if i'm not doing if i'm not doing well call me out if you have you, you, you have a kid if you're a parent you praise your child when they're doing well and they not doing well call you out on it um I, I i i did i did see today and if i ever went back to like school and and got a doctorate I, my, my i think my thesis would be how unchecked fandom with this with a sporting team is a disease yeah it's a disease like i my mentions like I, like I knew it before, but like today, like it's like, like this is a di- this is a disease. It's 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 very fascinating, man. Very fascinating. Anyway, that that's for the that's for the disease podcast to take a little 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 joke from the around the NFL. We might, we might get a we might get old Doc back on here and talk about it. I, I, I think you know, shout, shout out we could get Doctor Lindsey Mitchell. I mean. We say that the Saints open against the Titans, so we gotta talk to Dr. Lindsey Mitchell at some point. We gotta really? touch base with Dr. Mitchell. Anyway, she be t- <laughs> <laughs> thank y'all for the support. Um, we appreciate y'all. Um, we love y'all, and we'll keep doing what we do. Um, be safe out there. And with that, we're out. This is the story of the one. As head of maintenance at a concert hall, he knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Granger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. You prepared your kids for their first steps. The first day at school, their first dance, that big test, all the wins along the way. With a College Savings Iowa 529 plan, you'll prepare them for even more. Register before May 31st for a chance to win a $1,000 contribution. Visit collegesavingsiowa.com to make the first move toward a bright future. College Savings Iowa, it's how parents get through college. Administered by the State Treasurer of Iowa.